Thank you very much for those very interesting remarks. Uh, what is the popular perception of Mr. Gorbachev? Ah, yes. Well, um, let's say that at least um, now 40% or so are, are, are at least neutral about him. Uh, 10 years ago, it would have been hatred and contempt. But, um, but uh, neutral is, is, is is, is better than um, it, it was, and um, it's, it's it's really sort of shameful that at the time you know they've just been celebrating Yeltsin's um, uh, Yeltsin as, as well, and and they're celebrating Yeltsin while not celebrating Gorbachev. But um, it, it, it'll take a long time for them to reassess Gorbachev, and I think that we also. Um, need to reassess him ourselves because I think that he was a lot, his achievement was lo a lot greater than we have given him credit for. Um, and I think that history will be a lot kinder than it is the, the, the contemporary assessments. Yes, a, a couple of days ago we had a lecture by the head of the National Endowment for Democracy, and this is a group that goes around the world and uh, gives money and, and advice and support to opposition groups in countries where uh, there is an autocracy. Do you think that uh, sort of uh, endeavor would be helpful in the Russian context? I think it would be positively counterproductive. Um, in fact, I know it. Um, that's, that's really the point of what, why I've been saying what I've been saying today. Uh, by the way, to answer his question, I saw on CCTV last night that Mr. Gorbachev yesterday was given the highest honor uh, of, the, of the Russian government, the highest one that was given to his predecessor. So, and it was interesting how it was reported by CCTV. In any case, I wanted to ask you, what about Chechnya? What do you think is going to happen there? They keep doing these bombings, these attacks, and when is it going to end? Well, um, Putin's <coughs> policy of Chechenization was, he thought it was going to be an answer, that it meant that the, you know, the army and the special forces could, could retreat from Chechnya, but it's, it's actually made things, from the point of view of the Chechens, worse than ever, uh, in that the um, Kadyrov uh, is much more ruthless even than the Russians were. And, um, things really couldn't be worse there and it's but they're not going to improve until the country changes its its uh, political spots uh, the, the, the situation for instance I, I say this because you're a woman and I'm a woman I, I've been talking to a lot of uh, very um, really marvelous Chechen women who have been here for the Commission on the Status of Women at the UN and they've been giving me an update about what things are like for Chechen women today. And things are worse for them than they were in the 18th century. Um, they, they always used to be proudly independent and um, to, to wield a lot of power in the family. Today, they, are, they can't do anything without the permission of a brother or a, 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 a father. There are, Bride kidnappings, there are honor killings. These are now so so frequently happening that um, they're, they're they're not even reported. And these girls have 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 very very few places that they can even you know refugees things like that. Um, and they they are taking the punishment that their men is, is being inflicted on their men. It's a very, very bad situation, and it's not going to get better. But I'm very, very glad to say that uh, Human Rights Watch is, um, is doing a lot of work there. It's um, the most active of the, and effective of the Western NGOs. Um, Thank you. Uh, two related questions. You say that things will change because they must. But do you have reason to think that this will be in less than another 80 years, let's say? 
the yes, vegetarian yes, rule. Yes. And, and what will do that? The other part of the question is related. Um, you speak of the, them forming a different form of democracy. Um, what, what's an example of what you have in mind? I think of different forms as being the US style, parliamentary style, or that plus ethnic or religious quotas. Well, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it's very um, different from what people are now beginning to say about the Middle East, um, that, um, that imposing the exact form that democracy has taken in, in different European countries or in the States is, um, we've seen that that doesn't work. That, that, um, and um, we have come, each of us, to our own ways of each country has its own tradition of democracy in Europe, and, and, and the States has too. And that's going to have to happen in, in, in Russia, because um, otherwise it, 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 it feels like a colonial imposition. I, I don't mean that. Um, I take that. I take that um, that we can't impose it. I'm just wondering whether you have an example of a, of a form that would be quite different from the three that I mentioned. Well, um, I, I think that they were beginning to get a model that worked right at the end of the Tsarist period, but uh, we're, it hasn't begun yet. So, I mean, I, I, I don't know, and um, we're just going to have to watch this space. Thank you. Um, you know, Russia has, since the beginning, the first Tsar, has been a very strict dictatorship, if you will. So what makes you think they'll ever be anything else? Because um, it's not if an effective way of running a, a market economy. I mean, at the moment, this I really mean it when I say that, that the corruption is disabling. But the, with every year, the officials, and that means everybody through from um, local um, provincial officials to the police, to the tax police, they're getting greedier year by year and more hated year by year. So the, um, although briefly for a lovely few years, Putin had a honeymoon period, the politicians in general are just now getting more and more hated. And um, they can't clean up this corruption unless they bring in the air and light of an open society. And um, so, so it is going to happen, but um, there could be quite a, it could be quite a nasty transition between here and there because basically because the people who got that money um, in the privatization program that followed the fall of communism are going to fight dirty to keep on to it. The first one is about the paranormal, the epidemic of paranormal. Of course, those are second-hand narratives. So mm. those stories reported, they have become a myth. But they're mm. based probably they on... Happened. They happened. Yeah, they happened. So what fascinates me is, do you, did you have a sense that they were collective representation? Or were they so vague that each person who saw it made it up their own way? The extraordinary thing is that there are... Um, I've found reams of notes. I mean, the, the people who were coming from different, from the de de defense um, ministry and from different ministries in Moscow, they took down reams of notes. I mean, there's a huge research dossiers um, it, it, with everybody's um, visions. And they have an awful lot in common. And the fact that they were seeing the same things is very strange. Um, I, I mean, it's the strangest thing of all. So I, I have to say that one of the things I learned in the course of writing a book in which I kept on bumping into the most improbable things is that I had to, there was a point at which I had to draw the line and say, I don't know. This is beyond me. I, I, I don't believe in fairies. I don't believe in UFOs. But something was happening there which was extraordinary. And is certainly fed by a particular sort of philosophical spiritual tradition <coughs> which allows them to um, to frame this in the same way. But I, I don't know. No, no, I know. We, we have a very well-known neuroscientist in the room, so maybe he wants to say something about this. I, 
I was wondering if it also doesn't relate to, you know, if you go back to anthropology, you, you may find similar structural presentation. And because it's modern time, we're not used to look at it from an anthropological point of view. My other question is, do you think Menshevism still has a certain glory and nostalgia in the way the Russians see their past? Because I remember it was a period I was very enamored of when the Menshevik got organized in 1905. Well, was. Is there something that still is a remnant thinking of alternative model of democracy that they could find it within their own history and rethink it? Of course, they are catching up with lost history, but uh, they've never, I mean, Menshevism was just another of those things which was blotted out of the history books for so long. And um, I, I, I'm not entirely sure how well educated they are now being. In, um, I, I mean, I think that among the elite, yes, maybe, but I doubt if, if, if very broadly. I think that a large amount of their um, in schools, the large amount of their time is spent on the Second World War. You know, they, they're not doing such sophisticated things as studying Menshevism. Could I ask you a question about uh, how pervasive uh, social media are in Russia? And earlier uh, in the week, we heard uh, from the speaker that was uh, referenced uh, uh, that in China there are 50,000 cyber police. Is there a similar uh, force in place in, 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 in Russia? You know? The internet is, um, is, is, is very, um, is, uh, people, the Russians have taken to the internet in a very big way. And um, it's, it's, the young don't really bother very much about television or the newspapers. They get their uh, information off the internet, and they they go very broadly. And um, and there are some extremely interesting um, both bloggers and um, and uh, and sort of newspapers and that. The most interesting of all is the fact that um, the you remember in the summer there was these these great big forest fires in Russia. The internet became the means whereby people um, spontaneously uh, started to collaborate in order to handle those fires because um, so many of the people who the the forest wardens had lost their jobs that. Um, the, 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 the state was left absolutely on wrong footed by these fires. And um, this, 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 the social organization of, of the internet was, was enormously helpful. Um, there's a great argument going on now, not just about Russia, but more generally about, um, about the extent to which we, in our enthusiasm, have um, exaggerated the liberating we, we, you know, effect of the internet and projected our wishfulness onto it and people like Dmitry Marozov who just produced a, a book now which argues passionately and he's a very knowledgeable man Belarus in origin now uh, US um, that um, we uh, have so deluded ourselves that um, that we could liberate whole cultures through the internet, that, um, that it's positively dangerous, and that we don't understand that the equal, as you were, second part of your, your, your question, the, the equal power of the internet to, um, to control people's lives. And yes, there is, um, there is a, they, they do, um, they're not like the Chinese, they don't use an enormous lot of um, state capacity controlling people. They, they've got a, a rather um, clever uh, habit going of enlisting sort of um, patriot thugs um, who, um, who send, um, who, who will uh, 
do cyber attacks on you know when when the word goes out they're they're sort of detached from government and 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 so much freer and they, they just sort of they are tipped the wink and they will um, turn on for instance they turned on Estonia when you remember when the Estonians moved a Russian war memorial and um, the this the Estonian government was was attacked by most enormous uh, cyber attacks which disabled the government. That was these, um, these sort of uh, thugs and um, pretty devastating. But right now, one of the effects of the Middle East upheavals has been to make them convene a new, um, a, 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 a new body to, um, which is probably going to screw down tighter on the internet because they, it, it worried them a lot the degree to which Twitter and so on were um, helpful in the Egyptian revolution. But um, as somebody like Marozov says, the, it's, it's never going to be very difficult for a state to, you know, they, they simply cut off um, mobiles in city centers, which are, um, the, 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 the power is all with, with, the, um, with the state in this one. So we shouldn't put too many hopes there. <coughs> How strong is the opposition to Putin? Um, I think that is, it's, it's, it's a difficult thing to judge because there's, whether you mean, the answer is changing so fast now that um, there's really, I mean, I would have given you one answer a month ago, and um, it, it's, it, it, it's, there is an opportunity right now for the reformers, but, um, and there are various reformers who are coming out now and saying, this is our moment, and coming out in print in, in Russia today. Um, and I, I, I think that if Putin wants to get back next year, he will do. But uh, if I were him, I wouldn't want to get back because I would want to uh, pack my pockets full of my ill-gotten gains and leave while I still had time. We have time for two more questions. It seems like uh, the problem when the Soviet Union collapsed was unregulated capitalism came before democracy, a la yeah. the economists yeah. from Harvard and so forth. Mm -hmm. And we know that capitalism needs to be regulated. Mm -hmm. So, and <clears throat> Russia was flying high there for a while when oil prices were so high and that fueled uh, a heavy bout of lending that Russians were felt they were very wealthy, certainly, at least in the cities anyway. So I guess my question is, in, in, for it to change, do you think economics will come before politics in the form of a diversified economy? Or do you feel like politics in the form of legitimate democracy will come before uh, diversified economy. Which one do you think will pave the way for the other one? I guess. Well, I think that the um, the problem is that I, I think probably the politics will will lead because um, the the problem with getting the diversified they're talking a lot about building a knowledge economy in Russia at the moment, but they're completely failing to do so because they're. Um, for instance, that institutions of education are rotting on the bow because of this corruption. Any um, scholar, um, scientists um, of, of, of note are all leaving for the West. It's no longer, um, it's, it's hard to hold anybody there now. And um, so you've, you've, you've got to, it, it, it's just the diversification is really going to remain on paper until you've got um, You've got there's a clear path through that you can see how the corruption is going to uh, start to be cleaned up and how therefore it's how Western investment is going to take part in this because they need our um, our knowledge economy to uh, to, uh, to, to, to for, for, for it to take root in Russia so it's going to be a long hard route but it, it absolutely starts with with, with politics here. That's always <coughs> fascinated to hear how foreigners, <coughs> what kind of perceptions they have of Russia. 
each time a surprise. Mm -hmm. But still, I completely agree with you that if America keeps so far from Russian events as is possible, it would save a lot for America. In time of Antropov, two times more Russians have positive opinion about America than now. In time of communist propaganda, now more or less they have ideas about this country. Also, maybe to mention that right now liberal democracy in Russia have zero chance. They can put together 200 people, 300 people, even in time when Middle East show such an example. They show us how helpless they are. And if change, any change would happen from bottom, not from the top, instead of Putin, or as opposition to Putin, it would be a mob. It would be xenophobia, it would be populism, nationalism, of course, kind, and nothing else. Putin is evil, no question about this. But we face only difference between two evils. I so, far, so far as Russia would have oil, this regime would survive for a while, because something dropped even to populists. But after, God knows, but certainly not democracy. I think there was a question over here. I, I had a question, uh, if I get the last word. Uh, what is the status of the uh, Russian nuclear arsenal? And how would you assess its security and, and whether or not it might be a threat to uh, the free world through terrorists, either exporting scientific knowledge or actual weapons? My sense in 91, when I was there, was that that arsenal wasn't very secure. No, it wasn't And I'm totally very surprised that we haven't seen any repercussions. What's your opinion? I think there's, uh, uh, the situation is considerably improved. Um, I mean, there have been periods during which um, Russia was uh, collaborating well with this country on, on clearing up that scene. And, um, I um, I think that the, the the period of real danger as far as terrorists getting hold of, of, of anything nuclear is, is over, and certainly this is a this is a conservative regime, uh, so it's not going to there is no um, that's not the danger from 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 this regime. Uh, I I think it's 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 a greatly modified danger. Um, there are, there are worse things coming out of Russia than than that at the moment. On that note, thank you very much, and uh, please join us for the next